Hi there, my name is Dr. Ralph Reeder and I'm a neurologic surgeon practicing at the Center for Neuroscience Orthopedic and Spine here in Dakota Dunes, South Dakota. We the physicians of CNOS would like to welcome you to our practice and we want to assure you that we'll do everything we can to help alleviate your current health problem. You're watching this short video because your doctor has determined you have a ruptured disc in your lower back. This is also called a herniated disc of the lumbar spine. The vast majority of patients that suffer from this ailment get better on their own over a six to 12 week time period. This recovery is assisted by using medications such as anti-inflammatory medications, pain medications, and sometimes injections in the lower back called an epidural flood. If you don't respond to that, your doctor may feel that you may benefit from an operation called microsurgical discectomy. Here we have a model of the lumbar spine. People typically have five lumbar type vertebra and they're held together by various joints, the largest of which is the disc. The disc comprises of fibers that run around the outside with a softer material on the inside. When these fibers break, the soft material will herniate or rupture through and cause pinching of the nerves. The operation your surgeon has proposed is to make a small incision and making a small bone removal in order to get to the nerve pulling the nerve aside and taking this disc material out. Small amount of disc will then be removed from inside the disc as well in order to prevent early reherniation of the material. This operation is typically performed under general anesthetic. That means you're completely asleep with a tube put in your throat. Occasionally your doctor might choose to use spinal anesthetic where you're awake but sedated and you have medicine put in your spine to make you numb from the waist down. Complications specific to anesthesia are dependent on your own general medical conditions and your doctor will discuss your risk with you at the time of your surgery. Complications specific to the operation would include nerve injury that could result in permanent or transient weakness or numbness in your legs or dysfunction of bowel bladder control and sexual dysfunction. The membrane that covers the nerve is called the dura and occasionally that can be torn in the course of the operation. This may result in leaking of spinal fluid and that spinal fluid if coming through the skin or pooling under the skin causing problems would need to be fixed. Reoperations or drains are sometimes placed to fix that problem. Infections are very rare but should they occur a reoperation would be required both to culture and to drain the infection as it does occur. Long-term intravenous antibiotics would be required and certainly your healing process would be delayed by such an infection. Antibiotics are typically administered either through a line up the arm or under the collarbone as an outpatient. In addition, sometimes wound hematomas or collection of blood clot can occur after the operation that would need reoperation to evacuate. Rarely you may lose enough blood at the time of your operation to require a blood transfusion. Transfusions are generally safe, but can carry the risk of an infection with either hepatitis or the AIDS virus. Your hospital staff is working very hard to protect you from these infections, and your transfusion will only be given if deemed necessary by your doctor. No guarantees can be given to the absolute relief of your pain, and no guarantees can be given that no complications will occur. However, understand that your prognosis is extremely good that you will have a good outcome with this surgery. Following your operation, you will have a brief stay in the recovery area and then be observed in the hospital for typically four to six hours. Your physician and his staff will determine when it's time for you to go home. Some people stay overnight because of problems with nausea and vomiting or incisional discomfort related to the operation itself. Once you go home, you'll want to be careful about your activities. Lifting heavy things can cause a re-rupture of the disc and recurrent pain. Don't lift anything over about a half a gallon of milk. That's about four or five pounds. And your doctor will tell you when you come back for follow-up when you can start lifting more. You also don't want to sit for longer than 20 minutes. Sitting too increases pressure on the lower back and could cause that re-rupture. Use 20 minutes for your meals or bathroom. 
You can go up and down stairs, walk as much as you like. You can sit in a car and ride in the passenger seat. Typically, it helps to recline to take some of the pressure off of your lower back. Your doctor will likely let you start driving at two weeks as long as you're not having any pain. During your post-operative time period, you want to watch for signs of infection in your back. That would be increasing pain in the back itself, redness or swelling, or any type of discharge that is yellowish coming from the wound itself. Obviously, if you have an increasing fever, typically over a 101.5 Fahrenheit, you should call the office to see if your doctor would like to see you early instead of your scheduled one-month appointment. Also, if you have swelling in your leg or you develop sharp pains in the chest while breathing or around your heart, you should call the doctor to be investigated for the possibility of a clot in the vein of your leg that can sometimes develop after any type of operation. Finally, it's important for you to know that some people will experience worsening of their leg pain after they've gone home. This can happen as the nerve is manipulated at the time of surgery and with swelling, it can act up. If you do have this pain, don't be especially worried. Call the office and we can give you medicines to help you with this. Your doctor might want you to come back to the office early to recheck you. We, the physicians at CNOS, know that surgery is always a frightening experience. But you need to know your prognosis, meaning our best educated guess as to how you're going to do, is quite good. The vast majority of patients who have this operation have near complete relief of their leg pain. We look forward to serving you and we wish you well. This is Dr. Ralph Reeder for CNOS. Thank you.